In this lecture, we'll start talking about how to solve differential equations. Specifically, we'll start with separable equations using a method called separation of variables. So let's start with a definition, um, a first order differential equation that takes the form dy dx equals g of x times h of y is said to be separable or to have separable variables. So if you can write your first order differential equation in terms of the derivative is equal to a product of a function of x times a function of y, then we'll be able to separate the variables and use that method to solve. So for example, if we have dy dx equals y squared times x times e to the 3x plus 4y, we can manipulate this by rewriting that exponential function. Remember, when you have a sum in the exponent, you can rewrite that as a product. So this could be y squared times e to the 4y times x times e to the 3x. And so you can see y squared e to the 4y is a function of y and x times e to the 3x is a function of x. And since we have that product there, that means that this is gonna be a separable equation. All right, if we consider dy dx is equal to x plus the sine of y, however, this is not separable because there's no way that we can write the right-hand side as a product of a function of x and a function of y. And when we have addition in the middle there, there's no way we can change that addition to be multiplication, so this would not be a separable equation. All right, so if you have a separable equation, these are the steps that you'll take to solve it. First, you're gonna group all of your y terms on one side of the equation, and all of your x terms on the other side of the equation. It's important to note that your differentials, dx and dy, have to be in the numerator on their respective sides. So if you somehow wind up with dx in a denominator or dy in a denominator, you're not gonna be able to continue this method. So if you see that dx is on the top of your derivative, then that indicates that dx needs to stay on that side and you should move dy to the other side, or vice versa. If dy is on the top of the derivative, you'll multiply dx to the other side so that your dy and your dx are in the numerator on both sides. All right, after you have all of your terms separated, so all of your x's with dx on one side and all of your y's with dy on the other, then you're gonna integrate both sides of the equation and solve for your dependent variable. So for example, if we think about this generically, our separable equation takes the form dy dx equals g of x times h of y. We wanna separate our variables, so we'll multiply dx to the right-hand side and we'll divide h of y to the left-hand side. And that's gonna give us dy over h of y equals g of x dx. Now that we have our terms separated, all of our y's on the left, all of our x's on the right, we would integrate both sides of the equation. So we would take those integrals, and then from whatever values we get from those integrals, we would solve that resulting expression for y to get our explicit solution. All right, so let's look at an example. We have dy dx equals x plus 1 quantity squared. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll multiply the dx to the right-hand side so that we have all of our x's over there together. dy is the only term that has y in it, so it's isolated on the left. So we've effectively separated our variables. So we have dy equals x plus 1 squared dx. Now that everything's separated, we'll integrate both sides of the equation. So the integral of dy will equal the integral of x plus 1 quantity squared times dx. Completing this integration, we're gonna get y on the left-hand side equals the integral of x plus one quantity squared. So to integrate x plus one squared, we can use u substitution. So let's let u equal x plus one, and that means du would equal dx. So we can substitute those in, so this is gonna become the integral of u squared du, and if we integrate that, that's gonna give us u cubed over three and we'll add an arbitrary constant c to the right-hand side here. So that's gonna be x plus one cubed over three plus c. So if we put that into our original problem over here on the left, we're gonna get y equals x plus one cubed over three plus c. 
And that's going to be the solution, the explicit solution for our problem. Now, it's important to consider we only added the arbitrary constant c to our right-hand side. We could have added it to the left-hand side. But if we had an arbitrary constant on both sides, we would wind up combining them by subtracting one to the other side. So really, when you're solving these separable equations, you only need to do that arbitrary constant on one side. And I usually keep it on the side with the x's. All right, let's look at another example. So this time, dy dx plus 2xy squared is equal to 0. The first thing that we want to do is we want to put this in the form of a separable equation. So we want to get dy dx by itself. So we'll subtract 2xy squared to the right-hand side. So dy dx equals negative 2xy squared. Now we'll separate our variables. So I want to put all of my x's on the right and all of my y's on the left. So to do that, I'll divide by y squared, and I'll multiply by dx. So we'll get dy over y squared equals negative 2x dx. Now that my variables have been separated, I'm going to integrate both sides of the equation. So we have the integral of y to the negative 2 dy equals the integral of negative 2x dx. If we integrate both of those using the power rule, we wind up with y to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 is equal to negative 2 times x squared over 2. And then again, we're going to add that arbitrary constant to the right-hand side, so we'll have plus c. So if we clean this up a little bit, we'll get y to the negative 1 equals x squared plus c1. So our 2's canceled out to give us our x squared. And we multiplied both sides of the equation by negative 1 to get y to the minus 1 by itself. Now note, when I multiply by negative 1, my c becomes a negative c. But instead of writing it that way, I'm just going to rename that constant. So c1 is the same thing as negative c. Sometimes when you're working through these problems, it's convenient to just rename your constants. Because if you do a constant operation on a constant, you still just have a constant, right? So when I take c and I multiply it by a negative 1, that gives me a negative c, but negative c is still just a constant, so I can just rename it and call it c1. All right, and then the final thing that we're going to do to get y by itself is we'll take the inverse, excuse me, the reciprocal of both sides. So we'll take the reciprocal of both sides. So y equals 1 over x squared plus c1. All right, and so that'll be our explicit solution for this differential equation. Now, note, when we rename constants, so that, that trick that we used, it's a useful trick to help simplify the answer, but you can only do that on terms that do not contain the variable. So when we multiplied a negative 1 times negative x squared, we couldn't just call that c because there's an x in there, right? So we can only rename things with a constant if we're truly dealing with constants and not variables. All right, let's look at another example. So this one, we have sine of 3x dx plus 2y times cosine cubed of 3x dy is equal to 0. Now, the first thing that we want to do with this is we want to separate our dy and our dx. So I'm going to move the term with dx to the other side. I'm going to subtract it over to the right-hand side. So that gives us 2y times the cosine cubed of 3x dy equals negative sine of 3x dx. From here, we can move all of our x terms to the right. So we'll divide both sides by cosine cubed of 3x to get 2y dy equals negative sine of 3x divided by cosine cubed of 3x dx. Now that our terms are separated, now that our variables are separated, we're going to integrate both sides. So the integral of 2y dy will equal the integral of negative sine 3x over cosine cubed 3x. All right. So in order to integrate this right-hand side, we're going to need to use u substitution again. So let's let u equal the cosine of 3x. And that means that du would equal negative 3 sine of 3x dx. And if I solve that for dx, I would get dx equals du divided by negative 3 sine of 3x. 
So I can use these to substitute in. So I'm going to get y squared when I take the integral of 2y equals the integral of negative sine of 3x. We do our substitution in the denominator there to make that a u cubed. And then we write, excuse me, we rewrite dx as du over negative 3 sine of 3x. And if we've done this correctly, the sine of 3x's will cancel out, so everything will be in terms of u now. So that gives us y squared equals 1 third times the integral of u to the negative 3 du. If we integrate that, we'll get y squared equals 1 third times u to the negative 2 divided by negative 2 plus our arbitrary constant c. We're going to simplify the right hand side by multiplying our, our coefficients together and resubstituting. So y squared equals negative 1 sixth times 1 over cosine squared 3x plus c. And then we can use a trigonometric identity, the reciprocal identity. We know that 1 over cosine is the same thing as secant. So y squared equals negative 1 sixth times secant squared 3x plus c. And we'll leave it there. So this is going to be an implicit solution. y squared equals negative 1 sixth times the secant squared of 3x plus c. If we wanted to find an explicit solution, we could take the square root of both sides. But for this problem, we'll leave it as an implicit solution. It's going to be important that you read the directions on your problems and see if they specify whether they want an explicit or implicit solution. If it doesn't specify, then leaving it here should be fine. But if it specifically asks for an explicit solution, you would want to get y by itself. All right, let's look at one final example. This time we're going to do an initial value problem. So we have 2y minus 2 times dy dx equals 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. And we're given the initial condition y of 1 equals negative 2. So the first thing we want to do is we want to solve the differential equation. So we want to separate our variables. So we're going to multiply dx to the right hand side. So 2y minus 2 dy equals 3x squared plus 4x plus 2 times dx. Now that our variables are separated, we're going to integrate both sides of the equation. So the integral of 2y minus 2 times dy equals the integral of 3x squared plus 4x plus 2 times dx. Integrating is going to give us y squared minus 2y on the left hand side equals x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus c on the right hand side. Now there's no way for us to solve this equation for y, so we can't find an explicit solution uh, analytically. We can't do that by hand, so we're going to leave this as an implicit solution. So we take our implicit solution, y squared minus 2y equals x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus c, and we apply our initial conditions. So our initial condition said y of 1 equals negative 2. That means we're going to plug negative 2 in everywhere that we see y, and we're going to plug 1 in everywhere that we see x. So negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 equals 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus c. And we can simplify this and we can solve for c. So on the left hand side we get 4 plus 4 equals 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus c. So 8 equals 5 plus c. We'll subtract the 5 to the other side and we'll get 3 is equal to c. All right, once we found the solution to, or excuse me, once we find the value for c, we have to plug that back into our solution. So we get y squared minus 2y equals x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 3 as our final solution.